Fly your fair nation. Fly your fair Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. So, I'm back from Jamaica and I have a lot to talk about, but this episode is going to be like a quick recap. I'll touch on some basic realizations that I had while I was home and some everyday ignorances that just had to rear its ugly head and remind me what kind of world we live in. Um, to start things out, I want to thank um, Podcast and Color for adding a Pointless Talks podcast to their directory. If you're unaware of what that is, it's pretty self-explanatory in the title. It's a podcast directory for podcasts by people of color. It's pretty dope. Um, you can check them out on the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, and such. Um, podcasts in Color, and it's podcasts with an S because it's multiple podcasts in color i don't even remember how i heard about them but i came across them and i submitted it and you know i got an email that said hey welcome da, 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 da. this is what we do whatever whatever um for those of you who follow me on instagram you guys probably saw the post the other day so this is kind of like a late thank you shout out type thing but either way i mean you can check them out also on their website podcasts in color.com and you just go on there look around <laughs> you can type in i guess topics and such you can search for a particular podcast if you know Know their name and if it's on there it'll show up but you know you can type in pointless talks that's me and i'm there so <laughs> thank you for them for accepting my podcast and pushing it through and publishing it you know it just helps for people who are even just perusing and not necessarily know what they're looking for it's a great way to like you know just find podcasts for people that are of color if that's what you prefer to listen to and you know you guys can go there and discover new podcasts or you know whatever the case is so correct me if I'm wrong all the Caribbean prides have already passed because we're like ending out August now I mean I saw last week that's I think Seattle had pride or something I don't know but I mean I'm just glad that it's not just one month it's a continuous you know pride is every day every day we show pride so shout out to that shout out to Trinidad and Tobago again for pulling off their first ever pride event this year shout out well not event but you know the whole week of pride events that they had shout out to Barbados St. Croix and all the other islands who've put on pride events this pride season who have been putting on pride events all other islands that first time if i didn't hear about it somebody want to let me know who put on their first pride this year who've been you know organizing things in support of our community thank you to all of them shout out to them big up on yourself and you know of course jamaica (sighs) i'm so mad low-key because i went home and when i came out from jamaica literally the next day pride started or was it the i don't oh no um, it was Emancipation Day and then Pride or something like that, whichever. Um, we had Emancipation, then Independence. And I've been watching like Via Equality, JA, Facebook and Instagram and stuff. We Change JA has been updating and Chris Mitchell. If you guys don't know, Diana Mitchie, she has a YouTube channel. She's Jamaican and a lesbian. I love her. But yeah, I've been watching everybody's stuff <laughs> from home and, you know, all their participation in the events and everything. And I'm just like, I can pretend I'm here. <laughs> So, you know, I want to thank all of those people who did broadcast, who did post videos and pictures and snaps and Instagram uh, stories and YouTube. Not Well, yeah, YouTube also. Facebook live feeds and all of that. Nicole Dennis, Ben, the author, slid through. I saw a video of her at the Pride event I mentioned on an earlier episode. A lot of other people came to show support. I believe Dangel performs. It was successful. I had no doubts. I have faith in <laughs> Equality is JA and their organization to make sure that those those at home who are members of the LGBTQIA community do feel supported and comfortable they're included inclusive and come out and have a good time it's not about worrying about being in the closet or whatever the case is you don't have to worry about anything like that you just come out and have fun it's a regular day for you and it's a great day like i said i want to thank everybody who made their experiences through all of these pride events public sharing on social media is such a big thing i keep saying visibility is vital it is important we need to be seen it needs to be seen as something that actually happens it's not just a dream or a fantasy for the people who have never been to a pride who are questioning themselves who think something is wrong it's good for them to see that we can come together even on Helsha Beach with our rainbow flag and you know I'm saying out here doing death drops and holding hands with the same gender and being happy which is essentially the most important thing we can be happy we can exist in our skin we can enjoy our life and be proud of who we are as a whole and not just part of us we don't have to hide a part of us and you know I just I love that so as I said, just came out from Jamaica, realized something. Not really that I just realized it. It's more of a prominent revisitation. <laughs> it's 
it's annoying because it's not something that I necessarily like to talk about, but it's there. You know, it's kind of like ignorance is bliss. I try to ignore it because a lot of people would think that I'm on the privileged side of the spectrum as far as this topic goes. But what is this classist societal beef between town and country? For those who don't know, I was born in Kingston. St. Andrew, if you want to get all the way specific. <laughs> but I grew up in Kingston. Well, sorry. I lived in Kingston and I also lived in country, quote unquote, whatever. I lived in Portland, regardless. So me personally, I don't feel like I'm better than anybody. And I don't feel like anybody's necessarily better than me. Like, I mean, look at the show. I feel like we are all equal. Like different people have different experiences. Different experiences make people who they are. It's not to say that because you live one place and you live somewhere else that you better than them or you don't deserve. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's I don't have that kind of mentality. I've never felt that way about people because, like, you know, I've used pit toilet, outdoor plumbing, plumbing you know, we're going to be at a river. Use chimney at nighttime because pit toilet, the weird dung I want bush, I'm never want. <laughs> no, Duppy catch me. I've, you know, Duppy gunshot and all them something there. My neighbors had a foul cub. They still do. I went <laughs> When I was home, I was like, yo, the house built up nice and everything. <laughs> foul cub still there. I'm still a killer goat them. You know, like, there's st- like life's still a go on. And I know what rooster sound like in the mornings. I know what bats sound like at night. Me catch peanut while with me at picnic. Like, you know, I know how to choose ground food. Like, I, I have certain lived experiences that some people are not, were not exposed to. And that doesn't make me any different because of those experiences. It's just, like I said, an experience. But then on the flip side to that, I also live in, used to live in a two-story house in Jamaica, like veranda upstairs and downstairs. I had my own bedroom, my own bathroom. I had a driver that used to take me and my brother to school every morning and pick us up every evening. The same taxi man in New York City, my wonder where I'm there. Never seen him in a long time, but you know, I'm also I'm good. And we had a lady that used to come and clean the house and comb my hair and all of that. But my parents, my father never really... He didn't sweat none of that shit. Like, either way, go at the end of the day, as long as your moral value is your moral value, you don't if you don't lie, you're not, you're not carrying on with slackness, you go to school, you know your book, whatever. That's, that's all he really cared about. He never tried to teach me nothing like, oh, don't mix with certain people because, you know, like, unless people act a certain way, but not necessarily because of where they come from. You get me? Like, because, you know, time and place for everything. So... I was never, I never really was exposed to that kind of prejudice growing up. And as a result of that, because I've lived in both town and country, I get mad offended when people talk bad about country people. And I also get mad offended when people skin up their face when they talk about town people. It's funny because I just be like, can y'all just let people live their lives and love people for who they are? It's just funny to me. But while I'm in Jamaica being young, wild and free, me and my cousin, and my par, and you know, we're there with some friend and she bring up some, uh, we end up linked with some guys or whatever. And somehow the conversation came up about, every time I come home daddy know he need to bring my fruits from the farm and this this boy when I say I'm bright I'm brazen no no I'm from nobody you know look me dead in my face after I said daddy need to bring him something from Fiend farm because my father has a farm and talk about some yeah man a long time some mini for find a country girl and uh me and my cousins just looked at each other it was just like it's not what he said but it's how he said it his body language the way his body shifted the way he asserted his dominance when he said it it was like a very condescending tone kind of like I know people have this idea that country people are more docile or dumb or some fuckery. So whatever the case is, it's it's just how he said it that struck a nerve with me. And I kind of just looked upon him and said, mm, and just left it at that. He just said, I know I look upon him. Why are, you look, why are you looking at me like that, sir? No. But then there's that idea that all town people are the same also, which... I'll tell somebody which part of town I grew up and the heights to which his eyebrows elevated made me just want to respond like one of those people. Because at the end of the day, I realized that, let's not realize, I understand that people hear stories and they have a perception, there's a stereotype based on, you know, different things, you know, black people, white people, people from country, people from town, people from farm, people from wherever. And I know what happens I don't know how it happens in other islands if it's the same thing. I know how it happens in America, so I can only guess that it's just an ignorance within black people as a whole because my father would sit down and talk to you about how Chinese people united from front to back and all the way through, and that's why they have everything. (laughs) But I just feel like 
where you come from is just that you cannot define everyone from somewhere as the same thing just like a lot of people don't like jamaicans because we're this and we that and in all reality people come in all forms you can look at siblings that are completely different but have the same parents same upbringing like my brother and i for an example we have the same parents went to the same schools up onto high school live with each other for 20 plus years but we are so different then we have similar characteristics and views but not the same person and the same can be said for our little sisters like one's 12 one's gonna be 14 in december and even from little before puberty started destroying them and you know all that fun shit started happening they've always been visibly different with the way they carry themselves and it's just human nature i guess i keep saying you can't just put a label on people from a certain or people who look a certain way and say everybody that looks like this everybody that fits in this particular category adheres to all of these characteristics of said category it's not that's not how it works and not everybody from town guam bad not everybody from uptown have their head up their asses not everybody from country humble and modest you know say so same way <laughs> some of them will cuss your same way to feel like oh you know people at, at kingston some of them will scam your same way moral of the story is we need to just be better as a people if we're classes and prejudice about our own people based on where we were born and raised like how you expect other people to treat us and it's the same thing with the brown paper bag foolishness i think i touched on this um on a previous episode but somebody said they can't talk to anybody much darker than them and attraction is one thing but you don't think any chocolate woman is attractive like who brainwashed you even here you tell people you come from okay let's say south florida miami right one time you tell people you come from overtown (laughs) nah you come from Little Haiti, you come from Doral, Kendall, Hialeah, you come from Miramar, you come from Sunrise, Lauder Hill, Deep Side. People, you say these names and people have their ideas. You tell people the same thing from New York, you come from the Bronx, you come from Brooklyn, Flatbush, you know, you live in bed Whatever the case is, people have their prerequisite like not prerequisite but like their predispositions like prejudices so you can have an idea but don't make it fuel you enough to actually express your ignorance because you're just gonna look dumb not everybody is like that but on the topic of colorism within our race and all that i know that people bleach and i usually bleaches with other bleaches or light-skinned people but while i was home i saw something that you know it halted me it stopped me in my tracks this boy we are bleach running on this beautiful dark skin girl. When I say beautiful, like she is gorgeous, deep chocolate. And judging by his knuckles, because I realized that the knuckles are usually the dead giveaway. <laughs> he looked like he was probably chocolate. And then his mom is a deep chocolate woman as well. So I'm like, all right, you're doing all this to make yourself lighter. But the way you sniffing behind this chocolate girl, like it is baffling to me. Like when y'all children come out, well, not to say they're going to have children, but I think about this though. When y'all children come out black as the night sky and with deep rich skin and all of this, like, are you going to teach your kids not to love themselves? How do you teach your children to love that? Like, I'm asking this as like a real question. I'm not even trying to be a dickhead about this. I'm asking this as a real question. If you are somebody who makes physical, I shouldn't, I'm not, I'm not going to say this because I'm about to say something that could go into a spiral of many different things. But as far as colorism, I'm sticking on the topic of color. If you bleach, right? Are you teaching your children that you have to be light skin or light skin is better? Like, what are you teaching your children? You get me? Like, that's my question. And then it's like, I feel like the self-hate is real because why are you bleaching? Like, why? No, honestly, honest to God. What is the purpose of bleaching? To lighten your skin. Why? Because white people want to get darker all day long. They are here catching skin cancer to look like us. And y'all poisoning, like that chemical is not a joke whichever which way you do it whether you get good cream or what either way it goes you are stripping out the melanin from your skin and even though melanin is popping nowadays and people are preaching about melanin is popping and black is beautiful the darker the berry the sweeter the juice and all of this and i am here as a fellow brown person (laughs) to tell y'all that i am here for the chocolate nation and I, i i greatly admire and appreciate and i love my chocolate people there's so many of y'all out here who don't love yourselves enough to embrace that whether it be because you got picked on as a child or because your parents were light-skinned and they said like parents do do a lot of that brainwashing as well like my mom is od light-skinned and i don't pay her no mind because the type of person i am like she says stuff and i'm just like whatever like if i'm in the sun for too long she'd be quick to be like how you get so dark um we live in south florida uh if I walk to the car, I'm going to start sweating. Like the sun hot, it's called a sunshine state. But at the same time, this is a genuine question. 
if you or anyone you know is a bleacher, like if you bleach, you don't mind talking about why it is your bleach your experiences since and through bleaching. I really want to talk to somebody about this, like one on one or in a group setting or whatever the case is. Hit me up, slide in my DMs, at me, tweet me, send an email to pointlessquestions at gmail.com. That's pointless with three S's like everything else. P-O-I-N-T-L-E-S-S-S questions at gmail.com. I really want to talk to somebody who bleaches. It can be a phone conversation if you're not local. They don't have to be LGBTQ or even Caribbean, just anybody. Because I have questions. I really, I really want to know. Like, this is something that I'm really, I'm really curious about this. I really want to understand this because why are you bleaching? How did this start? What do you hope to accomplish by this? You did it to be like cartel because it want, you know, him tattoo them for sure and him can't put color. Like, I really want to know. I'm not trying to be funny. This is sincere. I really want to know. I'm not making fun of nobody. I'm not judging anybody. I am genuinely curious. I just, inquiring mind wants to know. So, on the topic of questions, I'm going to touch on something because I've been more present on Twitter lately, right? And a bunch of things keep coming across my feed. Like, literally, social media is how I get my news. The other day, I'm recording this. It's Wednesday right now. It's the 29th. The other day, a little boy committed suicide. Nine years old. Nine years old. He started fourth grade and committed suicide in Colorado and his mom is saying that he took his life because of anti-gay bullying from his classmate said her son told you know his sister that his classmates told him to take his own life this is named Jamel Miles I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly my heart goes out to things like this because at the end of the day this happens so often. We hear about this all the time. And no matter how much we talk about it, it's still happening. A lot of people, like, honestly, they'll hear about it today. And by next week, somebody else dead and they don't remember this one and so on and so forth and so on. This one particularly that I'm talking about is because the conversation around it is what's annoying me more than anything. I don't want to say annoying, but it's it's upsetting. I'm seeing a lot of people asking stupid questions like, he's nine years old what does he know about suicide how does he know he's gay at nine years old nine years old honestly like i tweeted this from my personal account because sometimes i gotta filter myself so in order to not filter myself too much i just go on my personal account and have mouth diarrhea but i don't understand why people now that we're older maybe it's just humans in general because i feel like my parents did it to us to a certain point also or maybe it's because they did do it why they acted like that i don't know whatever but the cus the questions how does he know he's gay or what does he know about suicide or whatever and i'm like how old are y'all was nine years old that long ago that y'all don't remember what y'all were doing at nine Y'all don't remember what you and your classmates were doing at nine years old? Y'all wasn't... From my experience, we was playing truth or dare when I was nine. Spin the bottle, dumb shit like that. And when I was nine years old, matter of fact, they was teaching us about sex ed in the fifth grade. So for those who had birthdays in, you know, January or whatever, y'all was learning about sex ed at nine years old. Some of us, 10. So obviously they thought we were old enough... Well, not old... Well old enough, mature enough, or able to grasp the concept of the conversation at that age. And they were teaching us about drugs, you know, we had the D.A.R.E. program, and we had the stock market exchange. It was a lot of things that they were giving us at that age that a lot of people are trying to act like now, oh, they're just kids, they don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, what do they know about this? And the thing about it for me is, at nine years old, you can tell if you like a boy or a girl. You, you know, y'all have little crushes. I mean, I had a little boyfriend when I was nine. You know what I'm saying? He ate my ice. <laughs> that was going to sound wrong. Like, I used to give him my ice cream sandwich because they had, like, mint or some foolishness. And I didn't want to eat that shit. But, you know, I had reduced lunch or whatever the case was. And he had it. Whatever. And, you know, I had a little crush or whatever when I was nine. When I was living in Jamaica, somebody, you know, said some, some reckless things to me. We were seven years old. So you can't even say that, how does he, like, that's, that's dumb. That's a dumb question. Take it, take, take your head out your ass for two seconds and be realistic. Like, where were you mentally? Where were you socially at nine years old, at 10 years old, seven years old? All of these ages, people act like children are this vessel that just wants candy and naps and toys and, you know, want to watch whatever foolishness is on TV and whatever the case is. And it's wonderful to want to have that idea. But realistically speaking, kids are 
they're doing the same shit we were doing. Some of them are doing the things that the other kids we weren't hanging out were doing. You know what I'm saying? They're reading. They're thinking. That, not even like saying on a sexual basis either because someone I saw tweeted and said, when you had your crush, you weren't thinking, oh, I want to have vaginal sex with this person. It's just, you know that you have somebody that you're attracted to that, oh, this little boy is cute. I want to be his friend. I like him. It's not, oh my God, I love him. I want to have hot, sweaty sex. Like y'all are putting your perverted thoughts thoughts into something that really isn't that deep people feel different people have feelings whether they are a child or an adult they are still human beings they still have feelings whether you agree with them or not it's not for you to project your smut upon a nine-year-old child if he's gay he's gay nothing in the article said anything about sex it said that he was being bullied for being gay. Like none of these like things said anything about him sexually doing anything or expressing himself sexually or anything of the case. Like it's just this little boy knows that he likes boys and he's being bullied for it. Kids are telling him to go kill themselves. And how can you really sit there and be like, oh, what do they know about suicide at that age? Something I didn't really plan on talking about. When I was that age, I was suicidal. I knew what it felt like at that age to not feel wanted, to not feel comfortable, to not feel accepted. And thankfully, I'm chicken shit and I'm afraid to kill myself. I wasn't strong enough or whatever the case is. I'm still here, you know, so I can have this conversation with you. Whatever the case is, not to say that he's like, whatever, whatever the case is, he didn't get the experience to make it to this age. You know what I'm saying? He took his life. He couldn't bear the pain anymore. He couldn't deal with it. And he ended his life. Y'all need to teach y'all children to do better. Y'all need to teach y'all nieces, y'all little brothers and sisters to do better. Like I said before, I had the conversation with my little sister. And when I went to Jamaica, funny enough, she introduced me to her little friend. And her friend is a grown ass man. But she, <laughs> I don't know if she realizes just yet that she's a grown ass man. But that little girl is very masculine presenting and not even like, oh, she's a tomboy. It's like, sis got swag. Like, sis got swag. She, uh, you know, Jenna, Jenna, <laughs> she got swag. And there's nothing wrong with that. I had a conversation with my little sister about it because she had a picture on WhatsApp of her and a girl and they was hugged up real close. And I was like, y'all look cozy. I'm not making it sexual. I'm preying these things on my end and I'm leaving it where it's at because at the end of the day, that's her friend. Whether she has her current ignorances right now and she feels like, you know, gay people are nasty and disgusting or whatever the case is listen one of her friends that she her only friend that she's ever introduced me to might turn out to be a lesbian i'm not gonna sit here and tarnish that friendship and you know bring that to light or ask her about her friend or whatever the case is i'm not gonna go there with her because they're 12 13 years old let children be children you know some of them go on like them big and you know them want to do things <laughs> however them feel like them want to do it but at the same time y'all are talking about this being disgusting but the only thing that's disgusting about this is that a little boy died by his own hands because kids his age told him to kill himself because of who he is. That's what's disgusting. That's that's the only thing that is disgusting in this whole scenario. Like I said, y'all need to teach y'all teach the youth better. You gotta raise them up in the direction that they should go because when we old, who's taking care of us? These little ingrates? You gotta teach them what's right from wrong. You can't teach them this bigotry, this hate. Hate is taught. It's not something that is you're not born with hate because you're born a blank slate and life influences and draws on that and puts in and forms you into the person that you grow up to be and experience we're going to talk about experience a lot experience helps you to become the person that you are and that you're going to be you know what i'm saying so you guys need to be very mindful of the way you talk to children and things you do and i see it all the time and it bothers me people with their children and grandchildren i saw a little girl walk into the store the other day and she went to we have like a rack of cars like you know a little um the pullback cars you pull it back you let it go and it drives or whatever and she runs over it's a whole stack of them and she's like picks up one of her grandmother's like put that down you're not a boy the fuck so because she's a girl, she can't play with a car. Like, what are you what are you teaching your kids? What kind of limitations are you putting on your children, whether it be mental or physical, psychological, whatever? Like, y'all need to be mindful of the things that you do, because growing up, if you tell this child that same thing or something in that narrative enough, 
it's gonna stick it's gonna be something that they question when they get older and it's gonna be like hey i'm not allowed to do this because i'm a girl what why like i said before i was the baby for a really long time like i was the only girl and the baby for a while and my father did not play none of that oh i'm a girl i can't do this shit when it came to me he didn't play none of them games and i am very grateful for that because if it was oh you about to take this tire off all right come stand up and watch how to do this oh i'm about to go fix this sink all right pass me a washer pass me a wrench pass me a piece of pipe he did not discriminate as far as what's for a girl and what's for a boy he might skin up and face one two time or whatever but i mean i feel like i talked about this and i'm gonna talk about this forever because one of my favorite memories of my dad that's like stuck with me first since it happened when i was probably about seven or eight i don't know we're on the veranda whatever and he decided he was gonna teach me how to jump rope i mean who was gonna teach me i think it was summer break or something like that and he was just like all right i'm gonna teach you how to jump rope already whatever and daddy took me outside and i'm standing there and when i say papa start jumping <laughs> you know say he was jumping rope he's teaching his daughter how to jump rope some boys probably like 17 or so some older guys on the veranda next door hollered out something about my dad jumping rope so something like oh so y'all jump rope now or something so my father said like basically to the extent of me have to teach my daughter like you know what i'm saying i have a girl like granted there was a woman there that could have taught me but my father was comfortable enough in his sexuality and in who he is as a person to do something that some people might deem feminine but at the same time niggas is jumping rope in a gym in a boxing gym like that's a good fucking exercise (laughs) granted i was doing it for fun it was a play thing for me i had a cute little sparkly jump rope with little glittery things in there and it was plastic and it made a little whooshing sound and all that shit like it was great but who cares is a great bonding moment it's something that i treasure and it's something so simple and honestly he probably doesn't even remember it but that meant a lot to me especially the fact that somebody tried to jeer him because of what he was doing and he was just like okay basically fuck you i am a father i'm doing what i'm supposed to do as a father making sure that you know i'm sharing experiences with my child and teaching her how to do something he taught me how to ride a bicycle all of that fun shit i think my dad either him or grandma taught me how to sew but at the same time he taught me how to bake and these things are okay i hate when people try to put gender roles and specifications and requirements on children especially there's that one video that's going viral about the girl teaching her daughter to be a future mother and wife i understand what she's saying hear me out now hear me out you're teaching your child how to keep a home the issue with that for me is you're teaching her how to do it for a man like There's more to a woman than being attached to a man and being a mother. There's so much more to being a woman than that. Granted, you know, you're a stay-at-home mom. You homeschool your child. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Good job for you. You are doing a service because not everyone has the luxury of being able to stay home with their children and teach them values and raise them. But you should never, ever, 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 ever tell anyone be it a boy or a girl that they should be something for someone else so that someone else can value them so that someone else would want to be with them so that someone else can see them as valid like you're teaching your child to do things to be a good wife how about you teach her things to be a good woman to be able to take care of herself to be able to support provide and like how about self-preservation first before you teach her how to nurture someone else how you teach her how to nurture herself and provide for herself before you teach her like okay you teach her not to be lazy bomb check mark yes good you should have stopped right fucking there sis you should have stopped right there because then you talking about so she can be a good wife and what washing dishes cleaning the house that's what makes you a good wife because i know a couple men that'll wash the dishes and clean the house and guess what they as dominant and as masculine as they come but shit has to get done you know what i'm saying that's not a woman's job if it's in the house and it needs to get it done it needs to get done but i don't know y'all y'all really need to stop the madness teach your kids to be not assholes <laughs> like teach your children not to be complete dickheads okay there are certain things i know we in school when i was in jail we used to rank people like <laughs> I was horrible. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my friends, we used to sit at a table on lunchtime. Everybody that walked past used to get ranked. We used to clown everybody. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Bobo wearing ass nigga. Like we used to be ignorant. But at the same time, we did that shit to everybody. At the end of the day though, those people can still come back to us and talk to us because we weren't bullied. We literally was just clowns. Like we would just sit there and talk shit. If we see, honestly, there was a couple people of us in the group that if they saw somebody actually took it the wrong way, they'd run up and be like, yo, you good. Don't pay them no mind. Like whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't like dick bags. We wasn't telling people to go 
kill themselves we wasn't you know like we we weren't being malicious we were just it was all in the sense of joking and sometimes you can look back at these things that you consider as jokes and you don't know what a person's situation is because what if that person was talking about his bobos those were his older brother's shoes and his mother ain't got no money to buy him some new shoes and those you know what i'm saying but at the same time also like you don't know people's situation you can joke about things all the time but as long as these people are able to approach you on a neutral level and it's not on some like get your broke ass out of my like just be human just be human at the end of the day don't teach your children hate point blank period and i hate that people are talking about how the only reason the boy knows he's gay is because disney's putting all this gay stuff in tea on their shows now and everything is projected and gay agenda and blah 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 the same crybaby fuckery because at the end of the day how did i know that i liked girls at 10 years old the same way you knew you liked boys or the same way you knew you liked the opposite sex when you were that age You didn't feel anything for the same gender. Go you, you're quote unquote part of the majority. Ooh, (laughs) that doesn't mean you're superior. That just means you like something else. I like something else because I don't like mint chocolate ice cream. That is disgusting. However, pistachio ice cream is delicious. And guess what? They look almost identical. It's the same thing like human beings. We are all people. You get to know us. You might like some, you might not like some, but you can't judge somebody based on how they look, based on how they love, based on where they come from. Get to know people. Put away your biases, like put away like all that negative, like learned shit that people have taught you, all the stuff that they try to tell you oh it's wrong to like why why is it wrong because it's different just stop the madness like just do better do better on another subject you know also relating with children and stuff of the sort stuff i see on twitter i've been (laughs) more present on twitter lately via my personal account but um this topic caught my eye and it's whether or not you want to teach your children patois especially simultaneously with english as people from other countries do you know like people who speak spanish they want to teach their children spanish and english at the same time as they're teaching them to talk they're teaching them both languages so that they can be fluent in both and it's been a topic on would you do you want your children to learn patois basically i mean granted it's a lot of jamaican people on the um (laughs) on the topic that i've seen because it's surrounded based on something that happened regarding that but i know that different countries have their own patois like their own patois isn't just jamaican it's it's another (laughs) time but at the same time there's the subject that you know is jamaican patois even considered an official language or if it's slang some say it's a dialect some say it's a language some say it's just bad english i want to touch on this on another episode like a future episode because it's just me here and i want various opinions you know y'all can comment and let me know same thing tweet me message me dm me whatever if you're from the caribbean islands any one of them do you want your children present or future if you already have kids do you are you teaching them do you want them to know if you don't have kids yet you plan on having kids do you want them to learn the tongue of the people from early and also i really just want jamaican's opinions on this on this portion but anybody can answer is jamaican pato an official language questions that i need answers for (laughs) okay on a final note i want to state that i'm playing with the idea of having a co-host granted the show is called pointless talks but if you're anyone you know is Caribbean and LGBTQIA and interested in utilizing this platform to help spread the word, share, or add some point of views, let me know. It may be a full-time or occasional co-host situation. It's completely up for discussion. Whether you want to come once a month or once every other month or when something hot comes up or whatever the case is, all it requires is that you're available Wednesday nights between 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't have to do much of anything, but be yourself, actually speak. I'm not sure if i want to do a radio a radio a telephone co-host i feel like i'd prefer someone physically in the studio with me while i'm recording but i'm open to just about anything like if i feel like someone's the right fit and i need i'm just i just have to have them you know whatever the case is over the phone will make it work some way somehow we can do it it has been done but it's just an idea serious inquiries please send an email to askpointless at gmail.com that's a-s-k-p-o-i-n-t-l-e-s-s-s at gmail.com i don't mind I don't care if it's a boy, girl, genderqueer, transitioning, transitioned, uh, whatever the case is, non-binary, whatever, uh, cisgender, I don't, it doesn't matter to me who the person is. I just, I would prefer someone that is of the LGBTQ community and someone that is Caribbean, that is 
the preference that is what i prefer however like i said i am open to other options just talk to me you know if i don't find anyone compatible with the show it will still go on it is still pointless talks but i am playing with this idea it's not like i'm out scouting right now it's just something that i've been thinking about like you know maybe they might want to hear me talk to someone other than myself (laughs) sometimes you know based on the last episode i get anxiety and all that stuff it'll be more comfortable in a sense to you know have a regular conversation with someone instead of having a you know it's it's an idea it's an idea so keep that in mind let me know anybody that's interested let me know if you know anybody who would be good let them know before you let me know that you want them to come do it because you i want to hit somebody and be like hey i heard you want to be on like wait what i want to do who what but yes so that's that anybody's interested anybody who knows anyone that might be interested hit me up i am on the twitters i am on the instagrams i'm on all of these things but serious inquiries honestly ask pointless at gmail.com if you're really serious about it let me know there it is maybe if i the idea becomes set in so and it's not just a toy for me right now i might post an instagram something and y'all can slide in my dms or whatever but for now for those who actually listen y'all got first dibs but yeah so we're gonna wrap this up please don't forget i keep plugging on social media this whole episode don't forget to follow us on social media facebook twitter instagram everything is pointless talks p-o-i-n-t-l-e-s-s-s t-a-l-k-s we are on twitter instagram facebook a whole bunch of shit you can now find us on podcasts in color directory big up to uno again subscribe to our podcast pointless talks on soundcloud apple music google play music etc yes i'm still working on (laughs) adding a few more platforms but for those that we are on if you like us rate us please rate us rate us rate us the more ratings we get you know the more visible we are in the podcasting directory as far as apple music and all that stuff so people can see me when they search things like just open it up and i'm right down the front page just just rate me give me five stars keeping about mind feelings i'm doing a self and just like every other week whether you got here on purpose or by fate thank you again for tuning in to the pointless talks podcast